I don't usually do unboxings because I don't usually purchase lots of very expensive things. However, today I've received the replacement for this rather worthwhile PCM3012 300 watt MPPT solar charge controller. And judging from the box size, that's going to be a rather fancy unit. And indeed, it's something that has roughly 10 times the capacity for about five times the price. This box contains a Morningstar TS MPPT60 MPPT charge controller capable of delivering about 60 amps at 12, 24, I believe, 36 and 48 volts. So that's roughly 3.6 kilowatts at a balancing charge on a 48 volt system. And obviously less if you use the lower voltage system, but I'm going to run 48, so let's dig into this. It's a roughly, I believe I paid about 660 euros for it, including taxes and shipping from the US. It's strange how it's never cheaper to buy from Europe than it is to buy from the US or China. The fees are copper. Hmm. Looks like it's double box, which is always nice to see. Morning Star Corporation TSMPPT 60 made in Taiwan. I was expecting this to be American actually. Oh well, I suppose it doesn't matter. It's not from the Shenzhen market. We have a teasing us. We start out with a manual. Extending cable length. Hmm. Well, it's nice to see a proper printed manual. This one seems to be... Hmm. Rather lengthy and only in English. Wow, that's 68 pages of English manual. Very nice. Probably another 60 pages of international manuals. Won't have much use for those. And now for the goods. Something seems to be well packed. Nothing more in the box. This is a rather weighty unit and I'm sure you're going to figure out why once we get it out of this bag, although I can see the camera's picking it up quite clearly already. And we do get a small nondescript box. I'm going to tease you and open this one first, although I suppose I'm mostly teasing myself. Yeah, this is obviously commercial. We have a remote temperature sensor, which they do brag about gi giving you included in the package, and that is an impressively long cable. I am, well, I am very positive there's a price to pay. In fact, I, said, I expected this to even not be included or to be very limited, but this looks like a very, very easy to install device. Nice, and we get a ferrite for it. Some mounting screws for probably the entire unit. A plastic device. A large screw. A hanger, I believe this is what's the, what the entire unit rests on. And a small screw terminal connector. Either way, we don't care about that. Because we have the unit itself. Don't eat. And this is a passively cooled unit, which is one of the major reasons that I chose it over the similarly priced Outback uh, devices with similar specs. I do not like the idea of having a fan in something that's going to be running autonomously. 
and what does the spec say? Maximum input voltage 150 volts DC, input current 60 amps, output current 60 amps, operating voltage 10 to 72 volts, ambient temperature 45 degrees Celsius, and it only says 12, 24 and 48 volts DC, so according to that label it doesn't support 36 volt systems. I don't care, but there are various sources on the internet saying that this unit does. Three LEDs on the front, seemingly green, yellow and red. The label isn't perfectly aligned, I'm going to need to warrant to return it for that. Perhaps not. Hold for the reset button. Uh. More labels. Try time PPT 60 amp. Serial number lots. I wonder if it says the actual date of manufacture of this unit. I would be curious to find that out. But it does not seem to. Nice big box. Let's try to break our way inside of that. And inside of a box which just comes off with a couple of screws. Uh, we can figure out where the plastic device goes. There we go. Reset button. Which seems to be of very high quality. I would have expected something cheaper. We have our array, common and battery terminals and a whole lot of interface terminals which I was surprised to find out considering how this is practically the cheapest unit you can get off of this size. It's supposed to support Ethernet for some kind of configuration interface. I haven't looked into that too much. But also IS-232 and IF-485 if you want to use that. It also does a lot of the configuration through that dip switch in case you don't want to use a computer, which is nice I suppose. Not too much else to say about this. Now a very interesting feature of this particular device is that I do not see a warranty board sticker for this hatch. So, let's have a peek. And on the inside, we don't really see much at all actually. We have a rather heavy gauge wiring and a few rather large capacitors. Wow, that is very soft wiring. I do like that. Up we have some 200 volts, 330 microfarad caps. Those are probably on the primary side of the converter on the solar panel side. There are six of them and some smaller caps behind them. Probably won't be able to show you that. On the other side we have mostly just cabling. We have a large toroidal, probably transformer or choke. Obviously a transformer or choke and really not too much to see. The transistors are wedged up against the heatsink there. Just squeezed against a large silicon pad. And there seems to be some kind of custom made bus bar thing going along that edge there, connecting everything together. Oh no, that's the yeah, that's the device that's pressing the transistors up against the heatsink. It's just a plus. No, it's a metal spring with some plastic insulating on it. It seems rather nice looking solution. I do not mind that at all. Can't really see much at all inside of this unit there. Not without taking it apart further, and I don't think I'm going to do that because I haven't tested it yet. <laughs> But it certainly looks like an extremely high quality unit. The soldering quality looks... It looks just perfect really. As you'd expect because it, after all it is only a DC to DC converter, rather large one, but it is fairly cheap for what it is. But I certainly do not mind the look of that inside at all. And there are actually two chokes in there. It's very hard to get it on the camera, I'm sorry. Oh, there are three chokes. Wow, lots of choking going on. 
They seem to be heat sink to the back plane of a unit. Certainly not a bad looking device. I'm going to have to test if it's advertised to 99% efficiency is actually true. I wouldn't be surprised considering it seems to be built out of very high quality. Now that's a first look at the Morningstar Trackstar MPPT TSMPPT60 solar charge controller. Now rest assured there will be a technical review of this coming out in due time, but for the time being I just wanted to do an unboxing video. Thank you for watching. Cheerio.